name's Ian Hardy. Uh, um, for about 10 years, I worked at London Business School, finished up as the Associate Dean for Executive Education. The last 14 years, I worked for LVMH, uh, with the last four of those as the Global Head of Learning and Development for Sephora, the, the global beauty retailer. Um, and recently, uh, I've just left LVMH and become the founder of an independent consulting company called Hardy & Company. <music> of us is motivated by different role models, different motivators. Um, and so depending on who it is that you look up to or look across to, you, that's the person we need to be displaying the behaviors and the role modeling of the value of, of learning. I think there's three or four behaviors we can adopt as individuals to make learning more effective. One is just encouraging people to ask one question. That question is why? And it's great, you know, the number of times I've been to see our business leaders who say, fantastic, sales are up by 30%. It's frightening when you say to them, great, any idea why? And you want to know why, because then you can, you can learn from it, not necessarily replicate it, but you can take those lessons forward. So why? And the second thing for me is, is this openness and curiosity that you are really genuinely interested to understand. I wonder why that happened what can I learn from it? And yes, I can learn from it and take it forward. There's, there's one final one, which people rarely talk about, which I think is key. And that is a word, tenacity. Um, often we talk about resilience, um, but I think tenacity, that ability to stick to it. I'm gonna crack this, I'm gonna learn. There is more to find out. I really want to get engaged with the topic and the subject. Um, and I've seen some of the, the brightest and best what really enables them to progress is they have this tenacity, this um, stick at itness to really push through and, and, and develop themselves to, to take on bigger challenges. Final thing I'd say is as, as a group, what we have to do is to celebrate. So celebrate when someone has learned, has advanced, has made progress, and you can make the connection between what has happened and the progress they've made. Um, and we probably don't do enough of that celebrating. Obviously, and obviously is not always the right answer. You know, led from the top. You know, it, you want to have a leader who is seen to be at the very top, valuing people who are learning and progressing. But I think what's interesting is, and we can go back almost 20 years to the work done by uh, Mike, Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell spoke about what we call mavens. And these are the influential people in networks. And one of the things I often try to do is to think a little bit about who is looked up to or across by particular learners. And if I can convince them, they will convince others. So rather than taking the easy answer, which is just get the CEO to tell everyone they should learn, look for those people who have an influence on others. And it may not just be the CEO, it may be the person who's two steps ahead of you because you can see that what they've done and how you would be able to potentially take the same path that that person's taken. So I think it, it, the people who lead learning need to pay attention to understand who is influential in their network. And if you advance their level of commitment to learning, that will have a bigger impact than maybe just classically getting the CEO to do his learning is important speech though that's also important as well never decry the power and influence that a ceo has particularly if you're talking to them so the one thing the internet's given us is access accessibility um, which is good news um, what we do with it is the next question what you decide choose or you desire to access is up to you as an individual um, so I think it will widen the talent pool in the sense that people who perhaps weren't have an opportunity to see what the opportunity was or to build a language or an understanding or a competence or even a capability um, to be able to access opportunity will get that. I think that it's interesting as to what is in the mindset of the different generational learners. Um, I think, and I don't want to be too stereotypical, but there are there is a, a group of learners who are maybe younger than me who 
want to learn in the moment, for the moment, for the challenge. Um, and the question is, are they prepared to access learning long term uh, for their, their long term development? Or is it always going to be, in inverted commas, just in time and transactional? Um, so that's one of the challenges. The other really important, and I spoke on another question about the difference between barriers and triggers. I think the, 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 the triggers are there in terms of accessibility, connection, and, and being able to get access to all sorts of um, different resources. The barrier is the attitudes of those people who are making decisions. And a lot of work's done on unconscious bias uh, and on bias. And are people prepared to say, yes, that person learned online, that's as valuable as the person who went to my alma mater or whatever. So there are some societal, organizational, structural barriers that we need to address, as well as celebrating this, this idea of accessibility and you know, the breadth of resources that we can get access to.